Hi everybody, welcome to the first of a series of videos about metaprogramming and tactic writing for the Lean Proof Assistant. I'm recording these videos for the workshop Lean for the Curious Mathematician, which is happening in July 2020, but I hope that the videos will have a longer shelf life on their own. So I have a few goals here. I want to give some kind of an explanation of what's going on under the hood with Lean. What happens when you write a definition or a proof? What does the system actually see? Um, I want to talk about what is metacode, what is VM execution. Maybe you've seen these terms come up on Zulip before. What are they and why should you care? Um, I want to do some actual mechanic work. I want to talk about how to manipulate these under the hood objects. Um, and I want to take a relatively quick look into the API that exists in Corlean and in Matlib uh, for writing tactics. So the assumption throughout these videos is that you've used Lean before to write some proofs. You know the general mode of interaction with the system. Um, and maybe after the first video, it will be helpful if you have some functional programming experience, you've used Haskell, ML, or something like that before. Things might make a little more sense. There are a few perspectives that we can take toward a system like Lean. One might be that at its core, Lean is a programming language. Another perspective might say at its core, Lean is a type checker. If we're interested in verifying mathematics, maybe the second is more relevant, so let's start with that one. Um, we want to ask Lean this question. Given two terms, T and P, we ask, is T the type of P? So what do I mean by this? What are T and P here? They're expressions, which is to say that Lean has a grammar. It tells us exactly how we're allowed to construct well-formed terms in a certain logical language. There are atomic expressions, so constants like nat, um, names of lemmas that we've proven, bound variables. Um, we can apply expressions to expressions. We can abstract over variables. I'll say more about these different constructs in a later video. Um, this is just to give an idea. Every expression that we construct in this grammar has a type. The type of the expression is determined by the way in which it's constructed, by the sequence of applications, abstractions, which constants appear, etc. Now, the logic of Lean and similar systems is, is special in some way because terms and types are actually both expressions in the same language. So proving a theorem amounts to giving Lean a name and two expressions. The two expressions are the type of the theorem that we're proving and the actual proof. And Lean will check that the type of the proof we gave is the theorem statement that we claim. And then it assigns this new fact to the name that we give it. And it adds this as a new declaration in the environment. So as an example, on my screen here, I have a proof that all natural numbers are positive. The type is written right here. This is more or less an expression. The proof down here is also an expression. And I tell Lean, assign this fact with this body, the name my lemma. If you write a proof term like I've done here, the input syntax is pretty close to what Lean stores under the hood. Lean stores something that looks a lot like this as the type of my lemma. Now it fills in some implicit information. For instance, the, uh, the inequality symbol that I've used here has an implicit argument. Well, it takes a type, which in this case will be nat, and it takes a type class argument that nat actually has a less than or equal to operation. So Lean fills this in for us in a process called elaboration. And what the system stores contains all of that implicit information. But for the most part, the structure of the expression that Lean stores looks pretty much the same as the term that I've written here. And same for the proof. Lean has filled in some implicit information, but stores something that has roughly the same structure. It's an abstraction and then an application. What if I write a proof in tactic mode? 
In fact, let's try to write the same lemma. Call it my lemma two. Let's use it. Use begin end blocks to prove it. We'll say something like intro n apply nat dot zero le. So okay, there's another proof. Lean accepts it, so it must be a good proof in some way. But what have I written between these begin end blocks? It's not a proof term like I wrote up here. But Lean is expecting a proof term. It's expecting some kind of expression under the hood. Effectively, this script here is a set of directions for Lean. It's telling Lean how to assemble an expression whose type is the type that I've written up here. How do you give directions to a computer? You write a program. So in effect, this proof script is a program. Its output is something like a proof term. It's outputting something pretty similar to this. And what's the input? Well, this script knows what it's trying to prove. If I, if I inspect the tactic state, it knows the goal at any point. Um, it knows what variables are in the local context. It knows about other declarations in the environment. For instance, I could use uh, simp to prove this maybe, which would find existing simp lemmas. So we call this collection of all of the relevant information a tactic state. And a tactic proof like this is, morally speaking, a function that takes a tactic state and produces an expression produces a proof term that looks something like this. So let's go back to what I said a few minutes ago. Lean is a type checker at its core, but from another perspective, it's really a programming language. And the details aren't important for now. Um, remember how we said we had a grammar for expressions? Well, there's a notion of evaluation that goes along with this. Under the right conditions, any expression should reduce to some kind of normal form. And if we think of normal form expressions as values, then any expression we write down in Lean is a program that computes some value. This includes proofs as well as definitions. Uh, for the most part, I'm glossing over some details. Um, so our tactic scripts are programs that produce Lean expressions. But every Lean expression is a program in some sense. So our tactic scripts are programs producing programs, which makes them metaprograms. I should note that this terminology isn't completely standard. In practice, if you hear people talking about metaprogramming in Lean, they probably mean writing tactics themselves. So implementing intro, apply, things like that, um, not proving lemmas using tactics. Um, in these videos, we're going to focus on implementing metaprograms, not using metaprograms. But technically speaking, there's no difference. When I write intro n apply nat zero le, I've written a metaprogram. So one final note for this video. Lean has a very interesting and somewhat unusual feature that we use the language of Lean itself to write Lean metaprograms. And what do I mean by this? The contents of this begin end block here, this is actually a lean expression itself. I, I don't mean that it's generating a lean expression. I mean, it is, we covered that. Um, but itself, it is a lean expression. It's a term with type tactic unit. Um, there's some syntactic sugar, some parsing magic going on, but we can look around it if we write something like this. Um, the square brackets with the back tick tell Lean to parse this as an interactive tactic. And we see in the message window, Lean thinks that this is some complicated term with the type tactic unit. So it is actually a Lean expression itself. What's essential is that this complicated Lean expression doesn't appear in the final proof output of this begin end block. If we print the body of my lemma 2, we'll never see this tactic script. We'll never see this. Um, this is a function that takes a tactic state and outputs an expression. And the output is what gets given 
to lean as the body of my lemma two. So how do we implement and run a function that takes a tactic state and outputs an expression? We need a way to talk about lean syntax from within lean. And we need a way to evaluate metaprograms so that we can actually use them in practice. So these will be the topics of the next videos in this series.